Hey guys, welcome back. I've got another really great video for you. Here in this clip, one of the Ford representatives is going to tell us everything we need to know about charging this Ford Lightning. So I'm super excited. He's gonna cover all about the Sunrun deal, what's going on there, what kind of equipment do we need. They actually have a demo display there on the wall to show what it looks like and everything. So stay tuned, watch this video, and you can see everything you need to know about charging your Ford Lightning. Basically, if you get the extended range vehicle, the larger battery, um, you get this with it. So kind of cool for industry. Like a lot of people, you get an electric vehicle, you don't know what an electric vehicle is, you have to think about charging. What kind of charging do I need? Where do I get it? We give you the solution. So it comes with the vehicle. If you get the standard range, you can also purchase this. But the reason we do this one with the vehicle is because it will provide you 19.2 kilowatts of power. Now, that I was an engineer at one point, so it makes a lot of sense to me. If that doesn't make sense to you, that's the fastest you can home charge right now with AC power. So we 19.2, you can install it at that rate or you can install it at lower level. Some people kind of panic, oh my god, an old house, I got a small panel, I can't accommodate. We allow you to have some flexibility with it. We do give you access to that. On the extended range, we have what's called dual onboard chargers. So you have a laptop or a phone, right, and you plug it into the wall and there's that box in between. That box takes AC power from your house, turns it to DC so the battery on your units can use it. This system is the opposite. You've got the battery you want to access, but you have to convert it into usable power for your house. So you go from DC power to AC. So when we talk about charging, um, you look at this charger, and if you guys, have you guys ever seen AC chargers or oh, yeah. chargers? If you haven't, um, this, this top portion is what your charger will typically look like. So that's for AC charging. We do the AC charging, we do the 19.2 kilowatts in the truck through that portion of the charger. This bottom part, this looks like a level three charger you do in public charging. This bottom part has our DC pins. So this is a direct connection to the battery. Up here it goes through your onboard charger. So that's where you have, you know, however powerful the onboard charger is, how much you can put the battery. Here, this goes direct to the battery. So we can take the energy straight off the battery. So if you come home from work or you come home and you would, your typical person, you would just plug your car in or your trucking, excuse me, and you'd go into your house and you'd either sit down and start watching TV, cook, whatever you're doing, and then your power might go out. When you're, meanwhile, your, car, your truck will be charging, your power might go out, you're out for about 40, 45 seconds, then it comes back on automatically. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to press anything, you don't have to go to the truck. And the cool part is we've used one connection to the vehicle to get access both for power off the vehicle as well as for no charging way. the vehicle. So it's, it's just one plug and you're set. Um, then when the power comes back on, uh, the power automatically starts flowing and charging your truck again. So if you think about in, a, in an event where the power goes out, most, most average homes use about 30 kilowatt hours a day. So it's like two, two and a half kilowatt hours per hour on average. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking, okay, I'm, I've got a five hour blackout, it's like two, 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 you're up to like about 10 kilowatt hours. This goes at 19.2. Boom, you just filled it all back up. So when you have those rolling outages in California, when you have intermittent outages, every time the power <coughs> comes back on, you're putting it back in. So what does that mean for an extended range vehicle that's charged up? You get three days of power. Um, if you if you ration your power, you can go as long as 10 days. So say you're on vacation, you want to make sure your freezer stays frozen, your sump pump runs, so your basement doesn't flood, you know, any of your attic fans are going so you don't heat up or melt anything. Um, that type of stuff can continue to run and you might get up to 10 days while you're out of town. Um, or you tell the kids, like me, I tell the kids to shut off the video games and we can go four or five days uh, and manage any outage we might face. So you guys are leaning on the stuff that's going to be in your garage or basement. Um, I'm glad that it's, you know, Kind of hidden like that because that's the way you'll see it this is this so so you have options right get the extended range you get charging with it problem solved we've given you two-thirds of the solution if you want backup power this is the third section or the third third uh, thing that you'll need so this is called a home integration system we don't call out the different components because it would get confusing to folks so we just call it your home integration system you want backup power get the home integration system the two main components in it are your inverter so this is your laptop plug 
takes the DC power, converts it into AC to put it into the house. This will run at 9.6 kilowatts. So 9.6 kilowatts is quite a bit of power. Um, depending on what you have in your house and the way of appliances is kind of really the, the thing you have to start to consider. So my house is all gas appliances. So no consideration, my whole house is gonna run no problem. If you're loaded up with electrical appliances, you know, your stove, your heaters, your whatever, um, that, that you might have to start making some trade-offs, but it'll run all of your outlets, all of your light switches, all of your fans, your ceiling lights, all of that. So you can keep everybody happy with the 9.6 and then there's some choices to make depending on the circumstance of your house. The other major component is your transfer switch. This is consistent, it's an auto transfer switch, it's consistent with if you had a gas generator or something like that. This disconnects you from the grid when the power's out, tells the system power's out, asks for power, the truck provides power back, and you're, you're back alive. So you notice the name Sunrun here next to Ford. Sunrun is the leading solar provider for retail solar in the US. Um, we're working with them for obvious reasons. This is a sophisticated system and they install solar all the time, stationary storage all the time. And so we've worked with them to uh, make sure that customers can make the right choices and have the right knowledge to install this the way they might need it and answer the questions as to like how does it work, how do I do this. And then the other cool thing is we can get solar through them. And then by working with them, we coordinate with them so that this unit, a lot of times if you get solar, stationary storage, and then if you get an EV, you know, you're going you're gonna to potentially have folks who bring an inverter in the box, you'll need an inverter for solar, you'll need an inverter for storage. This will accommodate your EV for backup power. It'll accommodate a solar array on your roof and it'll accommodate sta two stationary storage units all within one system. So think of it as like now I've got a DC side of the house that I can, you know, in the future do whatever. So we'll go this way and I'll tell you a little bit about a sneak peek of what some of the future is coming that we've already announced. So talk about pro power and board, right? Talk about um, intelligent backup power. Um, Take, take that intelligent backup power and just erase the middle word and you get intelligent power. So um, I don't know where you, I, I know where some of you are from, but not everybody. How many people are not familiar with time of use or variable cost of electricity through the day? Not a, not familiar. Okay, yeah, no, I would expect most, a lot of people aren't unless you own an EV or you live in a territory in the country where they actually do it. But basically what time of use rate is, is imagine you're driving into work in the morning and gas is $2.50. Leaving in the evening, it's $10. Would you change when you fill up? Like, would you always fill up in the morning? Everybody should be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna fill up at 10 bucks a gallon. Some people in California are getting close, but so, <laughs> so what electricity does is, is electricity has a peak period. So throughout the day, all the businesses are open, right? Everybody starts coming home from work and the houses start to ramp up. They call that peak. You turn your computers on, you turn your TVs on, the lights come on, air conditioner kicks in, um, and they have this curve that cause causes peaks. So that's when you see like the governor of Texas saying, please turn your air conditioners off. That's when you see some rolling blackouts in California because the grid starts to have brownouts and gets really taxed and can have problems. So what this truck will automatically do with intelligent power is it's going to identify those windows of low cost, which is typically overnight. Here in Texas, it's got a pretty cool thing for EV customers is you can get on some of the plans they offer free charging overnight. So they have a lot of wind in West Texas and basically if you don't use it, it's lost. So they're allowing customers to use that energy to take it. So imagine charging your vehicle up for free overnight, having it plugged in in the evening, and then during that peak period when costs can be two to four times as expensive as overnight, you take your house offline through your truck. So you're saving the customer potentially significant savings through that period. And then the utility, some people ask, are you gaming the utility that way? Are they gonna be unhappy with that? Absolutely not. I just took load off the grid when they want it gone and I'm using the energy that they're otherwise wasting. So it's a double win for the utility. And then I'm as an EV being a good consumer as well because I've been added to the problem by charging at the wrong time. So the truck through the cloud will do all that automatically when we launch intelligent power in the future. The cool part is if you're a backup customer, you're all set. All you gotta do is it's software. So, so you, there's no more hardware to put in to get intelligent power. And then when you think about the solar and storage and other things that can come, it's kind of a really cool thing. So people are like, oh, so this is like a gas generator. I'm like, not really. Like, I mean, it does that little thing. Yeah, I mean, it powers your house and the outage, but the potential is so much more. So it's gonna be a lot of fun to see how customers kind of use it. And an analogy would be our, our pro power on board. Um, the way people use that today, we're gonna see some other examples next door with the urban farm. But um, the, the uses are well beyond anything you could possibly think just off the top of your head. So, yes, sir. So, if you're using that consistently, say like every day during the peak power, 
how would that affect the battery life of the truck? Like, would it affect the cells over time? As we and come to, out to what with extent? the product in the future, we're going to make sure that we have the proper battery management techniques in place um, to make sure the customer is not compromised. So with backup power, um, just to put it in context, if I'm doing that, like say I have a typical five hour outage, you know, long outage is like four to eight hours typically. We all remember the three day or whatever, but most outages are like in the hours range. So if I were to go like say five hours and I was using two kilowatt hours per hour, that's like 10 kilowatt hours. So it's like maybe 25, 30 miles. So in that peak period, it's like, you know, 20 miles, maybe 30 miles or something you might be offsetting in backup power since it's intermittent. There's no issues at all. There's no real challenges to, to think about for batteries. But in the future, we're going to make sure that we have um, a system that works for the customer and operates for their needs. So, so working through that. But, but yeah, with backup power, it's you know it's maybe it's within the variation of what people drive already. So it's going to be kind of kind of available right off the bat. So it'll be cool. Um, I'll tell one quick story. I'm sure Hannah's like, okay. no, we're good. Okay, um, I'm going to embellish a little bit. So we've installed some systems in houses, um, obviously. And I was in the basement with a, a gentleman when we were, because we always test the system after we install it. So we're in the basement, and I said, you might want to turn a light on. And so he turns his iPhone light on, and the basement's kind of, you know, dark and stuff. And so the power goes out. And all we have is this little cell phone light. And it's a little creepy, but um, so we're standing there, and, you know, 40 seconds pass, boom, the lights come back on. And he was like a little kid. I mean, it's so fun <laughs> to see. Like, first time I did it, you know, you get the tingles and stuff. Oh, that was cool. But he looks at me, and he says, is that the truck? And I'm like, yeah, he's like, that's cool. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it is cool, isn't it? You know, and then we go out the garage so we can show him, yeah, it is the truck. Look, the truck's running. And he looked at that's his Ford awesome. Pass and he could see it was running. So on Ford Pass, you have the ability to um, see things. You'll get the notifications. You'll be able to say you want to go to sleep, pause the system while you sleep. So you save energy that way. Um, so yeah, he pulled up his Ford Pass and he's like, oh, wow. It's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> that's so, cool. so it was very cool. I mean, it's kind of cool. My, my other story, I may have told it at the beginning, but if I didn't, I'm looking forward to like the guy, like, when the power goes out and his neighbor calls and says your power out and you have to say i don't know let me check <laughs> you know what i mean it's gonna it's gonna be kind of neat that way and i'm probably like one of the few people on the planet right now looking forward to the next power outage this summer <laughs> but i'm kind of getting excited about it so it'll be neat to it'll be neat to see all the experiences that people have where it's like man it saved the day or it did this for me or you know it just like california i think it's going to be fairly popular because if you're working from home right and you've got those rolling outages, which it's just a matter of fact right now because they have to avoid forest fires and the winds and things like that. So they start rolling the power out to reduce power. Um, you know, if you're working from home and the power goes out, you don't really have any control over that. Now, if you've got your truck, you're already home, the truck's in the driveway, it's working for you. So if we think about like, you know, you always use the truck for work in the past. Now the truck has the opportunity to work for you, which is kind of a different paradigm. And, and I'm not as exciting because this is what the truck looks like when I do all my work just sitting here but imagine now it's sitting in your driveway not taking up space it's actually doing something so it's, it's kind of cool um, so I'll walk you over to the urban farm so you can see more of the stuff that the truck's going to do uh, beyond just going down the road so. if you had two lightnings I know they're hard to get that's probably not many people but if you had two do you only need one of the sun run you only need one setups? system and you would you would pair the truck with the system okay and so you could use yeah if you had two lightnings and then in the future depending on what we do to the system with the other evs we bring to market if you had a couple 40 evs yeah i mean you could come and go and have duration okay um, and cool yeah absolutely. awesome thank you so much really appreciate yeah. it yeah, glad you guys came. i know that was kind of a long video i really hope that helped you guys i have been learning a ton about this car a truck <laughs> it's just so funny that we have an electric truck now i keep saying electric car still but i cannot wait to get this hooked up in my house what he didn't cover is that i realized online the inverter that he has over there is actually also a solar inverter so you could use that to power your house from the vehicle from the truck and everything but then you can also have four parallel strings of solar panels to the same unit you don't have to have a whole separate solar inverter solar system but if you want to do a parallel system you definitely could but it's pretty awesome that the Sunrun unit actually includes solar input as well so very cool but anyways I hope you guys like that video I really hope you enjoy everything I'm putting out here feel free to do the YouTube thing and like share subscribe thanks a lot guys <laughs>